everyone, it's Maggie Bot, and I figured I would do a quick uh, what are you backing on Kickstarter type segment because I haven't done that in a while. Um, and as, as always, I would encourage you to not take these as the only things of worth on Kickstarter because there are certainly more things than you could ever want to back. Um, totally available at all times. A couple of reasons why I back a project um, that not everyone does. Um, if I think a project is small and needs more exposure, if I think a game is going to not make it to stores in the States, if I think uh, there is some part of the game that's going to get upgraded quality based on the Kickstarter progress, um, I do not back for exclusives or promos. I don't know that I ever have. Maybe the TMG Deluxe games, but I, I'm generally not incentivized that way, and I just don't care to have every single promo a game has because most promos are bad. <laughs> most games should be good on their own, and adding in a promo often changes a rule or, or messes with something, and I, I don't want that. And um, there's only there's a couple of them that are already closed, but they're things that you should look out for once they hit the stores and stuff like that. First up is Plants of Caledonia. This closed a little while ago, but they have like a late pledge button on their campaign. Um, it's pretty easy to search up. I also have spoken with the creator, I believe it's Juma, on Facebook, and they were very polite and kind. And they had sent this game out to kind of the normal folks, the Tom Vassals, the Man vs. Meeples. But they also sent a copy over to Mina, um, who does a BGG game blog, which is really smart and fun. If you've not read any of her blogs, they're worth a go. Um, she's just a fabulous game player and she'll play almost anything, which is kind of fun. Um, not all game reviewers go quite as broad as she will, but she does play a lot of heavier games and she really enjoys them. She also takes really fabulous pictures. So um, this is a hex-based map game with a little modular map like this. Lots of resources and stuff. Lots of building next to each other and relationships between the buildings. Um, I, I think a lot of people are saying it's going to replace Terra Mystica for them, and I, I don't think that that's what I need out of a game. Games don't need to replace another game for me. I'm happy to have both, because ain't nothing going to replace Terra Mystica. You could quote me on that right now. Uh, but it's got pretty fair-looking art. I, I quite love the style, and I think that they're going to be just beautiful. Um, it had some interesting stretch goals all planned out. He really set this out to be a big game and he, I don't, I, I'm not going to call it locked out, but he definitely hit well and made quite a lot of money. There is a late pledge button here in case you want to go and get a copy before they come out. I believe he will also find his way into stores. Um, they did raise almost 400,000. Oh my gosh. So really cool game. Uh, next is MOA, which also closed but has a pre-order button. Um, Ape Gamer is going to do the publishing, but this is a Martin Wallace game. Um, the thing I didn't know and the reason I backed this, uh, Nicole Hoy, I Heart Museums, was talking to me on um, Games on the Rocks on my stream. And um, she had mentioned kind of the history of birds and New Zealand and how um, that relationship started. Um, also dogs and possums and all kinds of other animals and how they have taken over and built up on the island. And this is a Martin Wallace game, so that's kind of a big plus, but it has this kind of comical nature to it almost. Um, it's so beautiful and I'm really excited to see how it goes. I didn't read much of the rules. This is one of those ones I backed without doing a lot of homework. But, you know, no Martin Wallace game is bad. They might not be for me every time. I'm not a huge Martin Wallace fangirl, but they definitely are always at least a good game. Uh, next was Kokoro, which was an indie boards and cards Kickstarter. Um, this was uh, basically they took the game Avenue, which was an Aporta game title, and it's kind of like a roll and write, but you use cards and you're trying to make little passageways. And they put it into the universe that Kodama is from. And Kodama was a re-theming and rejiggering of a game called Kigi. And so what Indie Boards and Cards was doing is building their own little world with these little spirits and things. And um, from what I know that they've added a few extra little mechanisms to the regular game, 
but it's pretty darn similar and you could play the same way. And also has a big benefit of being dry erase rather than just pen and paper. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I don't have a lot of games at this weight and I quite love Avenue. So I'm, I'm excited about the art and everything else. Um, one of the ones that is not closed yet, if you're watching when I record this, uh, is Game Tech the Book. Uh, this is basically a book collected by years and years and years of Jeff Engelstein's uh, talking on the Dice Tower podcast. And he took all of the math and science that he'd been doing over the years and he co collated it into 300 pages of stories and theories and science and you can see um, I'm not hiding this I'm only doing a dollar pledge right now hoping I might be able to pick this one up when it comes out I'm a little over my Kickstarter budget this month so this one had to go by the wayside but you'll see why on my last choice um, it is a really neat process and it's making plenty of money so I would hope that they have copies available after the fact and I'll just see them at a con and pick it up for sure um, at the time of recording, they have almost $54,000 out of their $3,000 goal, so they're doing just fine, but you can definitely pick this up, and it's not unreasonable. I think it's a $30 pledge, it'll get you the book, and there's like a $10 digital version. Next is Groves. This is a wonderful player game, about an hour long, from Dan Letzring, um, designed by Dan and Stephen Aramini. And this is one of the last um, freelance projects that Nolan Nassar did before he quit freelancing and started doing his own art so you can still visit him at cons and see the projects he's up to but he will no longer be doing these um commissioned works which i think is really interesting and he has a really good blog up about that on medium.com about why freelancing didn't work for his projects and how he was going to live his dream and i'm very inspired by the whole thing but let's get back to groves groves is um it's sort of so, and of course it's the art that's helping me make this connection, but it's reminding me a little bit of what Lagoon was doing as an abstract. Lagoon, you place things and you activate and you're kind of like um, control the flow of these energies. And Groves is a little more of a traditional game. You draw some things out of a bag, you put them on your cards, you try and activate powers, you can build portals to other people's Groves. But it has just a, a little element of that like checking everyone else's board states and trying to control where things are at what time. Um, again, it's a, it's a lighter weight game for what I normally play, but I think it's going to fit in with the kind of lighter weight games I like. Um, they have definitely made a lot of money so far. Um, they're waiting to unlock um, wooden tokens and plastic box insert. Um, again, I back projects that I think the extra money will increase the total product like if the retail copy is nicer because more people backed it and they could they can make it nicer um, I think that's important some would argue that you should just make the nicest possible version and kickstart that but that's not the reality of the psychology of kickstarter or whatever so I I understand <laughs> um, but uh, the campaign looks beautiful and the art is lovely so I look forward to giving the game a try. Next is Oaxaca. This is a 1-4 player little um, action selection game and it has uh, some dice and you collect up your resources and you're trying to make art and display it. Uh, ben Haskett created this one and he has done many successful Kickstarter products projects at this point. Uh, but the person I found out about the game from was Sarah Reed. She'd been posting updates as they were creating it on her feeds and I was getting so much more excited because of the beautiful art and the cohesiveness and I don't I don't mean this to sound insulting I I'm just gonna say it. the art all looks like hand-drawn line drawings it doesn't look like this big flashy over-the-top art it's simple and beautiful and not not overblown um, so I think a lot of art these days art these days <laughs> gets a little crazy and overdone and, and everything has 60,000 million colors and this one you they let the style kind of speak for itself um the game seems like it's going to be a good time I can't tell you much more than that because I'm still just back in it but it's definitely still available for another 12 hours as of this um they will definitely be trying to get this into stores 
Um, knowing folks behind this one, I am sure that that will happen. The last project I want to talk about tonight is Wendake. Uh, this is a project from Postscriptum. This is the folks that they did uh, Florenza, which is one of my favorite games. I love Florenza. Um, they also did Kepler, which I heard is really fun. Um, I've never found a copy, so I've never played it, but maybe someday. <laughs> uh, but this game is, uh, it's an interesting action selection game. You kind of choose a, a row or a column and as you choose different actions, you're going to flip them over. And so you're going to get fewer of them in the future. And so you're playing a couple of turns ahead. Interesting action selection. And the way that you're doing that is by building up different uh, parts of the culture and doing as best you can in a number of these wampum tracks. And your lowest score on both of the tracks is what you score during the round. So it's whatever you do the poorest and you need to do as best you can in every category, which I always love in games. I think that's really important. The other thing I will mention is that this is not an Italian made game about Native Americans and it has 6,000 cultures and tribal traditions and different symbols in it. This is one tribe that they brought in someone who had done their research that was a historian that told them about this tribe and the land that they called Wendake. I, it is, it is so beautiful to see something respect uh, a one heritage and not try and mix it with very vast and different heritages which you see in a lot of games with a Native American theme. Uh, there is some speak on BGG of cultural appropriation that these are Italians speaking on a culture that they do not belong to. However, they did a very respectful and wonderful job of highlighting these people. Um, I, I would say in general, historical accuracy is not the most important thing in the games, unless you're talking about a marginalized people, especially one that is subject to a lot of racism. So the respectful take on this game in this way is just so beautiful. And I am really excited to see a beautiful Euro game paired with a respectful historical theme. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Um, if I find out anything else, I will let you know. But as far as I know, um, the game should be out um, probably. Uh, the, the, the way that they're saying it is probably around Essen this year of 2017. So it's a pretty exciting time for them. Um, I'm looking forward to it and I hope you are too. Uh, that's everything that I've backed of late. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, if you'd like to see future Kickstarter videos, I can try. It just depends on what I've been backing and how many things and that type of stuff. I don't back a whole lot of projects. Um, I try and use my money in more immediate ways, especially during Gen Con season, holy moly. But sometimes games like Wendake come along that you really just want to put some dollars toward and encourage those types of voices coming to the forefront. Uh, that's all for me for now. Thank you very much.